Hi there, I'm Dr. Mally Coyne and I'm a clinical psychologist and NUIG lecturer and author and also on the mental health advisory panel with A Lust for Life. I'm absolutely delighted to be here to share World Mental Health Day with you 2020. I think on a year like this year, which, oh my God, uh, it's just been an unreal type of year in terms of uh, challenge and struggle for human beings all around the world, that I'm honoured to be able to share something that I find really, really important for my emotional well-being and I know helps so many people, will help so many people out there as well. Um, so I suppose I just want to extend my hello to you and thank you to Lust for Life for asking me to do this with you today. Um, I'm all about self-compassion and the compassionate approach. I recently wrote a book all about it, Love In, Love Out, a compassionate approach to parenting your anxious child because I feel like using compassion is magical in terms of at the moment we're living in a real, in a world where our threat response is really heightened and, you know, we're thinking of what what's going to happen at Christmas, what's going to happen in the future and, you know, we might be also focused on the past. And I think it's really important for me today, therefore, to talk to you about the three elements of self-compassion that might help you in um, managing the and navigating the situation that you find yourself in because we're all in different situations i understand that but many of us together are going through this um as a human race you know the difficulty of living with the covid pandemic uh for w world mental health day 2020 so i really hope this is helpful so the three elements of self-compassion are um, mindfulness is the first one. I'm sure you've all heard of mindfulness. I suppose mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment on purpose and without judgment. So it's this idea of um, accepting your feelings as they are. We all, you know, have a range of feelings every day, every moment. We might even have a number, a few feelings in one moment. Um, but what happens is many humans judge our feelings. We judge ourselves for, you know, I why am I feeling uh, sad or why am I feeling uh, anxious and almost get angry with ourselves or we feel ashamed for how we feel. And if you add shame to a feeling that's already difficult, you're actually making things worse. So if you use mindfulness, which is about, you know, accepting the feeling in the moment and kind of almost letting it wash over you like a wave um, and not trying to push it away as much because I suppose suffering is part of the human existence and I know it's really hard for many people out there right now um, but there's a lot of people who are very anxious at the moment who are focused on the past or the future and mindfulness is all about anchoring yourself into the present so even checking in with yourself and saying how am I feeling in this moment how am I and just breathing in and out and just even asking yourself, you know, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're having a shower, what does this feel like? And just being tuning into yourself without sh the shame, without the anger at feeling a particular way and not judging it. OK, so that's what mindfulness is. The second element of self-compassion is common humanity. Um, I love this idea of common humanity and I think it's never been as relevant as the in the situation we currently find ourselves in. Common humanity is all about our shared human experience of the of a roller coaster of emotions, okay, and a roller coaster of experiences. Never before now have we all experienced, you know, something so similar, each and every one of us in the world, the whole human race is going through this pandemic. And even though your neighbor mightn't feel like you do, even though your experience is very unique to you, and I absolutely don't want to put that down at all. What you're going through is your own experience of it. But sometimes it helps us to feel less alone as human beings if we know that we're not alone, that you're not alone in feeling grief. You're not alone in feeling lonely sometimes. You're not alone in feeling embarrassed, in feeling sad angry and having gone through something you're not alone and I know it might feel like you are sometimes but sometimes it helps us to know that we share in these experiences and for you to say then you know this is what it feels like to be sad as a human right now 
you know, and I, I guess, you know, that that's what for me, this idea of common humanity does help because there's we have a paradox in our in our existence as human beings. On one hand, our brains are very much focused towards threat and anxiety. And on the other hand, we are also incredibly resilient and adaptable to situations. And if you even look back over the few months at how you've managed since March, I think it's really important to look at how you've done that and even to kind of to pat yourself on the back. I know it hasn't been easy, but there are tools, there are things that you've used to help you and your family to adapt. So I just wanted to kind of say that. And then the third element of um, self-compassion or compassion focused therapy is um, self-kindness. So the whole idea of self-kindness is to... Um, so first we have the mindfulness, which is acknowledging our feelings. So this I'm feeling uh, sad at the moment. This is hard. And then the second element is common humanity. This is what it feels like to feel sad as a human being. And the third element is self-kindness, where we put a hand on our hand on our hearts and we say, may I be kind to myself in this moment? This is hard. May I be kind? And some of us have real issues with being kind to ourselves and we have there are a lot of barriers to doing that. It might come from maybe not feeling worthy enough from when we were younger or some type of situation has arisen, a traumatic situation for yourself. Or else you might feel like it's selfish to be kind to yourself or you might feel it's self-indulgent or, you know, why would I do that? Putting up other people first. I have so many other things to be doing. I'm in all my different roles. And what's the point of it? And I suppose what I'm saying to you is that self-compassion is critical for your emotional well-being. Being kind to yourself is absolutely crucial to it boosts your immune system. It helps you with, you know, in terms of your feel good chemicals in your brain. It um, reduces anxiety and depression and it really contributes so positively to your well-being and to your over to your emotional and your physical well-being. And it's almost like I call it the soothing balm of self-compassion. And if you find it hard to do it for yourself, what I would say to you is if your best friend came to you and said, I'm really struggling at the moment um, with this problem, what would you say to your best friend? How would you say it? You'd probably say, I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me more about that. Oh, right. OK, gosh, that's tough. God, that's tough. And would you be would you be berating your best friend and telling them, would you snap out of it? And would you get on with it? And, you know, would you be using that voice? You wouldn't, you know. And another lovely way of kind of, you know, learning to talk to yourself with compassion is kind of and this comes from uh, Matt Burke from Magic Minds podcast he talks about minding your little self so even thinking of yourself as a child and minding that little child part of you how would you talk to the little child part of you if you're struggling if if that little child is struggling how how would you talk to a small child who's struggling you would be understanding you would listen to them you would be kind and I suppose I'm extending out to you for you to do that to yourselves for for yourselves. So this is a little part of my book and I'm just going to leave you with maybe maybe we could come up with a little mantra that might be helpful to you. So this is from Love In Love Out, my book. And I suppose Love In Love Out is a mantra in a way because it's all about for me, it was about kind of pouring love into myself and reflect being able to reflect on what I was doing and being aware and tuning into myself so that I could actually do that for my children and for everyone outside, you know, because you cannot pour from an empty cup. You really can't like and, and that's so it's not optional, you know, like self-care and looking after yourself is actually not optional. It's crucial. Um, so this is from my book. Because our inner voice has huge power over how we feel about ourselves and how we make sense of and respond to our experiences, compassionate mantras like love in, love out, balance the negative inner voice we often tune into during our hardest moments. Many of us, and especially parents, are grandmasters at beating ourselves up at every opportunity we get. Now, this applies to all of us, to children, you know, to grown ups who used to be children. You know, being nice to ourselves may feel really alien to some of us. It's as if we think that being hard on ourselves will keep us in line and make us better parents or people. On the contrary, being self-critical doesn't prevent bad things from happening and it actually can make things worse for us. 
Being self-critical can be really harmful to both our emotional and physical health and is linked to everything from depression to anxiety to high blood pressure to a general sense of dissatisfaction with life. Just like a physical attack sends our brain's fight or flight freeze response into overdrive, so does an emotional attack, even if we're directing it at ourselves. At times, modern day's man, modern day man's worst president, sorry, modern day man's worst predator can be himself. To add insult to injury, when we engage in self-criticism, not only are we the attacked, but we're also the attacker, making the process doubly exhausting. With all this going on in our brains, no, no wonder self-criticism can lead to anxiety. To make matters worse, self-criticism can also arise from anxiety. This is because people with anxiety can feel alone in their pain and powerless to do anything about it, and they criticise themselves for it. Mantras are in essence the antidote to our brain's age-old tendency towards negativity, and they ensure that self-kindness trumps self-blame. I'm down with that. It's about being mindful of how you talk to and about yourself because your words are powerful. Examples of mantras would include breathe. It's okay, Pesh. I say that to myself sometimes when I'm struggling. I actually call myself Pesh and I know that might seem weird to people, but it's like I'm almost just soothing myself in that moment going, Mally, it's okay. You've dropped something again because I'm so clumsy or or things that I do are clumsy. I won't say I'm clumsy, but I, can, you know, things can be. But it's about like, rather than saying to yourself, say if you lose your keys, for God's sake, why did I lose my keys? I'm so stupid. It's about kind of going, oh, right, okay, so I've lost them again. And trying to kind of, you know, that that's, you know, I need to find them now. And, you know, oh, it's silly now losing keys, but I'm sure I'll find them. And not berating yourself. That it's it's, And it's not about telling your self-critical voice to go away and to like F off. It's more about saying, I'm going to turn, because that self-critical voice is there to keep you safe. And I know we all have threat-focused brains, so that's normal. But it's about turning the volume down on that and turning the volume up on the self-compassionate voice. The compassionate voice that talks to your best friend in a compassionate, nice way. The compassionate voice that talks to your the child to a child who's struggling in a nice way. Um, so practicing being positive about ourselves to ourselves is a hell of a lot easier when all is rosy in the family garden, when your kids are getting along and are in a good emotional place. Uh, so I suppose, but it's actually during the most challenging moments that practicing self-compassion is really, really important. And this applies to parents, to people who aren't parents, to anybody, absolutely anybody. I, I'm, I've am i been doing a lot of workshops with Galway Recovery College lately, and these ideas are really resonating with people who are who have struggled with mental health challenges and with their families. And they also resonate with people who haven't struggled. And there's a really good podcast I did with Sheila Scheuge lately that kind of talks all about um, self-compassion and certain examples people have written in with, you know, how do they deal with social isolation during COVID, with grief, with feeling upset that events have been cancelled, with just uncertainty, not knowing what's going to happen, um, depression, um, lots of different things, even the idea of feeling ashamed that they enjoyed their experience of lockdown, you know, so like we all are experiencing this World Mental Health Day in such a different way. I understand that. But we are all in it together in terms of our common humanity. And what I would say to you and, and, and what I would like you to do as an intention is maybe to come up with your own mantra in, in right now. Something that really appeals to you and something that speaks to you. For me, it's love in, love out, and it's okay, pet. But what can you say to yourself right now? What can you say to yourself in times of distress and put your hand on your heart and say, it's okay, it's okay. And take a deep breath and tune in with yourself and really, really, I suppose, kind of know that this is a moment of struggle. This is hard for me right now. I'm not alone in my struggle. This is what it feels like to be human and to struggle. And may I be kind to myself in this moment. And I truly hope and even you know having an intention for doing one thing that will be you know good for your self-care be it physical 
psychological, emotional, social, spiritual, whatever it is that takes your interest at the moment that you're curious about, that you feel, oh, well, I do enjoy going for a walk. Maybe I'll do that again. Or I do enjoy doing such and such. And really, it's the intentional care of yourself that's important. So I just want to wish you all huge, huge love, compassion, love and light to you on this World Mental Health Day. And thank you so much to A Lust for Life for uh, asking me to come on. I will be doing another Facebook Live with parents next Wednesday night. I'm really looking forward to it. So any questions you have, send them to drmallycoin at gmail.com. And I just want to wish you love and light and love into you, love out. And um, really, I, I hope that uh, that this has been helpful to you. And thank you so much for listening. Bye.